Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Let's Get Cozy. So, I am back with a, another book review. This book review that I'm going to do is called The Broad Experiment. What happens when single women get fed up? Now, this is the continuation from the other book, The Single Sister Experiment. And I recommend both books. I bought both of my copies from Amazon, and they are written by Mimi Jefferson. So, um, I have some notes. This review should not be as long as The Single Sister Experiment. So I'm going to read some things from the book um, just because it's no way to condense it. And then I have um, like two pages of notes that I'm going to um, kind of talk about and make points. So I'm going to start in the book. So the first thing says... Um, there's a time when it's okay to be one of many, you know, the one woman of many. Joan resisted the urge to look up at her best friend, Tisha, for a reaction. She continued to read. It's okay to pretend as if he's not lying to you. It's okay and even desirable to be the woman he glides into, supplying your body with pleasure. And then one day it will be over. It does not matter if you have been with him hour after hour, day after day, or year after year. He'll get up, and in that moment, what used to be good enough will not be good enough anymore. My whole life has changed since I got James out and let Jesus in. I have been celibate and walking with the Lord strong for a while now, and the sight of James just makes me think about the past and all the time I wasted holding on to a dream, or maybe I should call it a nightmare. I hold no conversations with him. He is my ex for a reason, and yes, I have vowed to allow him full access to our son, but he has absolutely no access to me, at least not anymore. That whole little paragraph is just self-explanatory. Uh, self I know most times when women... Um, in relationships or when the men in a relationship with a woman um, sometimes a woman tries to hold the kid over the man's head it's not about revoking that man access to his child now if the relationship is really and truly over then yes you can revoke access to you but you should never revoke access to your child um as far as you will know when it's over, me, myself, and I know other people that uh, was in very toxic relationships are, or that are still in toxic relationships, and they continue to say, I'm just so tired and fed up, I don't want to be with him anymore, this, this, and that, and I'm like, no, you're not tired, you will know when you're tired, because when you're tired, You'll stop saying that you're tired and you will just get up and just leave. Now, the second thing is um, they are in a church. And in a church, the pastor has what he called an elite eight. And so um, with the elite eight, they walk closely with the pastor and the pastor just mentors them um, to be better men of Christ, and um, he's pretty much kind of grooming them to be better husbands for whenever they find wives. And so here it just talks about, it says, first of all, they pray and ask God's guidance about a wife. If they notice someone of entrance, they have to watch her first. 
Some men even talk to the godly people around her, like her pastor friends and the other people in ministry with her. They want to make sure she is just not pretending to be a godly woman, but is a godly woman. They compare her, they compare her character to what the Bible says about what a godly woman should be. Now, with this little statement, it's very true. Um, I know a lot of women that say that they want to be married, they want to have children, or they just want to be in a relationship that leads um, to a marriage. I will say this, you really have to conduct yourself as a lady at all times because you just never know who's watching. You just never know who's watching. And so... um yeah and i'm not gonna even switch that and say guys do too because i don't believe that a woman should ever find a man i feel like a man should always find a lady the bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and so if you're gonna if if you want to be married and you want to attract the right men, you definitely have to carry yourself in the right way if you want a godly man now if you just want whatever is thrown or pushed your way then so be it but if you want a godly man and a true man of god you definitely have to watch how you carry yourself but we should be carrying ourselves as ladies we should be carrying ourselves as queens too why be why say that you want a king when you're not acting like a queen this next one is and then i'll go to my notes um, this one is very personal to me. It says, I knew God wasn't going to send me a husband until I didn't want one. Yes, he was telling me he needed me content, single. I didn't know the degree of selfishness that would be required. I know while we have a 50% divorce rate in the country, selfish people are getting married. Marriage is not about what you can get out of it. It's about what you can put into it. They don't want to hear about sacrifice, forgiveness, and the selfishness it takes to maintain a marriage. People just need to wait. Bottom line, allow God to prune and prepare. He will send that perfect person along in his perfect timing. I mean, would you really want to marry someone if it wasn't God's best? So, that first part, that's me. <laughs> I knew God wasn't going to send me a husband until I didn't want one. Right now, it's very, I'm not going to say it's hard for me to be single. I am content. I believe I'm content with being single. But, sometimes I still do want to be in a relationship and I know that I'm not ready to be in a relationship for the simple fact that I can't even answer the question of why I'm ready to be in a relationship. That's how I know that I'm not ready for a relationship just yet. But um, sometimes, you know, when people come along, you know, I start thinking, hmm, I wonder if this is the one or hmm, I wonder if that's the one. Because I'm still in that mind frame and I'm asking myself, are these people the one? It's something that I still want. It's something that I still desire. So maybe when those desires go away, maybe that's when God will send me my husband. As far as the selfishness piece of it goes and people not wanting to wait, that is very true. People, a lot of people, both men and women, we try to get with the, up, the opposite sex just to take from them we don't want to add anything we just want to take and until we can get to a point of adding benefits to the relationship then the relationships will continue to fail marriages will continue to fail because you're going in with the selfish mind state or with the selfish mind frame and so if you 
just forget about self and die to yourself daily and just think about what you can add to the relationship and what you can add to the other person maybe then and being intentional as well maybe then that's when relationships can begin to get healthy and flourish so i'm still waiting for god to send me my husband because he told me that i needed to wait and wait patiently and sometimes i don't be want to wait patiently i just be wanting him for my own selfish reasons but i'm not gonna get into that right now um another thing is adam and eve were running around the garden of eden freely content without a care in the world they enjoyed having god around but what happened after they didn't obey god they didn't want to be in God's presence. They actually started hiding. Hiding. Can you imagine one moment everything was cool? <clears throat> then they disobeyed. And the next thing you know, they are hiding from the one they enjoyed so much before. So this is a lot of us. When we are obedient, we're cool. We, you know, we, we doing, we doing what we do because, you know, we, we are following God's word. We are following his voice and we are, we good. You know, we, we are calm. We are at peace. The minute we decide to disobey God or do something wrong, we run and we continue to run farther and further away from him. That's where a lot of us mess up at. When we do wrong, we shouldn't run away. We should run to more. And when you run to, you repent, you ask God to forgive you, and you continue on in your journey. But if you mess up and you don't want to acknowledge that you messed up and you continue to run, all you're going to do is continue to mess up because you don't want to go back and face what you disobeyed, which was God. Um, let's see. This one, I'm going to read this whole page because this, this one was really good. This whole page, it, this whole page blessed me. I want to get married to a man who loves Jesus so much he wouldn't care to touch me until our wedding night. I want more kids. I want to sit around the table and eat fabulous fam family dinners followed by prayer sessions. I want it all. The two-story black and white house with two golden retrievers in the backyard in a beautiful neighborhood with top-notch schools, not to mention great sex and godly friends to endure the storms of life together. In other words, a life filled with passion, purpose, and laughter. Until then, and if then never happens, I want whatever God wants. One thing that really stuck out on this page was that um, when it says we made a man our God and suffered the consequences. Now, personally speaking, when I was married, my my marriage, my relationship was in turmoil the entire time. And when I began praying and God corrected things and things started to get better i would stop praying and the minute i stopped praying things just took a t took a turn back in the wrong um direction now there was times where i would put him before god he had basketball games every sunday sometimes his basketball games started at 11 sometimes they were later on in the evening and when I would ask him if he wanted to go to church, sometimes he would say no. And then sometimes he would say that he didn't feel like being around all of that. And then even at one point, he even questioned about, he even questioned the existence of um, of God. And it got me into thinking, 
know what, that kind of makes sense. And that was the biggest mistake that I made because you should never allow anybody else's uh, perception of God steer you in the wrong direction, especially if you know for yourself what God has done for you in your times of need. And even when you didn't need anything, you know, God continued to bless you. So I would say that I, I'm not going to say that I made him my God because I didn't, but I did go beyond um, things that I did for him. Um, yeah, so that's all on that page. And then the last thing is, let me tell you before I even read this. Um, it, I made a little footnote where it states that women make the difference. Women can make the difference in a relationship. Yes, it is supposed to be God, man, wife, children. But a woman she really can make the difference in a man's life. Now, right here, it says a woman who is serving God in word, in action, is impossible to ignore. The world would be better, would be a better place if women realized they have the power to influence men to straighten up and act right. I was on a crooked path, but God used you to lead me to the straight path and I will be eternally grateful. Now, I can't speak for all black families, but majority of the black families that I know, kids grew up in the church. Then once they got of age, they kind of steered away from it for um, a while, and then, you know, went back, um, went back into the church and then you, it was just a cycle you know they'll be in they'll be out they'll be in they'll be out now with that being said if a man knows and if a man can see how you love God and the amount of love you have for God and he knows that he has to come with something more than just whatever he has to offer he will strain up his life if he really wants to be with you. If he knows that you put God first and he knows that you will never put him first and he knows that he wants to be with you and he wants to make you his, he'll start going to church more. He'll, maybe he'll, um, join ministry. Maybe he'll start going to Bible study. As long as he sees you doing these things and that you are consistent with the things that you are doing that is a life that you have saved not not only did you save but you brought a life to god so women really can make the difference not only not only uh not only when it comes to bringing people um and having a relationship with god but also in, in relationships Say, for instance, I'm a single mother of two. I have two daughters. If a man wanted to talk to me and I, and I found out that he had kids and he was not in his kid's life, you can't talk to me. I wouldn't even allow you to talk to me for the simple fact of how can you be in my kid's life and take care of my kids physically, emotionally, and financially and um you're you're not doing that for your own kids and so i feel like it really takes a strong woman to make the difference in a man's life and if you are one of those type of women to um if and if you're one of those types of women that would allow another man to take care of your children but you won't say anything to him and taking care of his own children. I'm not going to judge you. But what I would simply say is shame on you. Because you have the power to make a difference 
in that man's life. Now, those were all of the um the points that I wanted to read from the book. Now, I'll be talking about my own points that also came from the book, but uh, they're they're shorter than me actually having to read the page. So, do not put yourself in compromising positions. Now, I have been celibate, and you'll hear me say that a lot. <laughs> I've been selling for a celibate for um, 11 months. It'll be 11 months tomorrow, which is December 31st. And when I initially talk to somebody, I let them know that, you know, I have boundaries, that I am celibate until marriage. And that, you know, in the, the first stages, if we're just hanging out, I'm not going to come to your house. I don't want you coming to my house. Um, well, you can come pick me up, but you're not going to come on the inside and vice versa. I can meet you at your place, but I'm not going to go in the inside. Um, it's not going to be any spending the nights, especially if our relationship is not even established. And so, um, I feel like when you have those boundaries for yourself and you're not putting yourself in those types of positions, then you will have nothing to worry about. So, yeah, definitely don't put yourself in any compromising positions. Um, Proverbs 26, 11, it states, as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool rep repeats his foolishness. When you know better, you do better. And that's just self-explanatory. When you know better, you do better. Um... God is for truth. The devil is for lies. Whose side are you on? Now, if you were to put yourself in a compromising position, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Now, just because this scripture says this, don't mean that you put yourself in a compromising position. Yes, God is faithful, and yes, he won't allow us to be tempted um, more than we can bear. But if you have control, if you have self-control, just try to stay away, especially when you are in your weak moments, if that makes sense. Um, these two next things are for men. Now, in the book, James was, um, he was a ladies man. And even though he had been with Raquel for like 14 years, the whole 14 years, he had cheated on her. And so... The men were having a discussion, and, it, and they just pretty much stated, we have the type of deep friendship that is uncommon among men. We are tied together, not by our love of sports, women, sex, or money. We are tied together by our love for Jesus. And these were the eight um, elite men that were under the pastor that were getting mentored. They also stated that in their times of prayer, they pray for the strength to be single and celibate in a sinful world. Now, prior to me reading this book, I get a little backlash from men uh, when I tell them that I'm celibate. And they say, girl, ain't nobody going to wait for you, especially when women are giving it up. And all I say is, that ain't me. And the right person that God has for me would be willing to wait because there are some celibate men out there. There are some men that do not feel obligated to have sex with women that are not their wives. And so, um, a long time ago, I had posted this status on, um, on Instagram, and I just feel like it is just so perfect for what I just read. Um, I, I had said, don't want, I don't want or need anyone that is living a double life. 
I need someone who has decided to do right in a world where people choose to do wrong. And everything in life is a choice. Either you can choose to do right or you can choose to do wrong. There's no, I'm doing right and wrong. No, it's, no, that's, no. It's, you either doing right or you either doing wrong. Period, point blank. Um, don't be so quick to give a man, all of you, even though they have offered you nothing in return. That's to the women. To my men. Don't be so quick to give a woman, all of you, even though they have offered you nothing in return. So, I don't want to give too much about the plot of the book, but um, just know that James was cheating on Raquel for 14 years. And in this book, we found out that Raquel had also been cheating on James for 14 years as well. And she had two children. She got pregnant twice. And both of the children turned out not to be James. They were actually children of the man that she had been cheating on James with. And so James had wrote her a letter in which in the letter he had gave her um, a gift that was from their son that was not his son. And it was like a circle. And so he pretty much stated that in a circle there is no ending and no beginning. Remember that you are loved with a deep, enduring, everlasting, no ending type of love. And I honestly think that's why we, when we get married, we give rings that are circles because the love is supposed to be everlasting and there's no beginning, there's no end. But I still need to do research on that myself. Um, one thing that really stood out, and this was stated at the end of the book, it stated, life isn't about surviving the storm. It's about learning to dance in the rain. And then Joan said, Lord, I finally learned to dance in the rain. That was very touching to me because that that is what 2019 has been about. I've had some, I've went through some times to where I should have been like, in jail or the, the woman's going have my own TV show something like I have definitely been put in those situations and the way I handled myself I'm surprised I am I'm, I'm just so surprised but I know I know it wasn't me I know that everything that I went through this year and my lack of reaction, I know that it was just all God because had it been Clinicia reacting, <laughs> Clinicia would have been in Clinicia would have been in a world of trouble. But yeah, God kept me. Like seriously, He He really kept me. So um they asked two questions in the book. When dating someone how far is too far? Kissing, touching, cuddling, etc. If you're just dating, all of that is too much. Like, that's just too far. Like, if we're dating, I don't want to kiss you. I don't want to touch you. I don't want to cuddle with you because we're dating. We're collecting data on each other. I'm trying to see if we are compatible through communication, through our conversations, through when we are hanging out, how, you know, how are we vibing? So I'm not trying to turn all of the non-physical of me really seeing who you are to turning it physical. And now I'm being blind, blinded because I'm kissing you. Now I want to touch you. Now I want to cuddle with you. Now I want to have sex with you. And then we have sex. And then now 
my vision about who you really are is just blinded because now I have added a physical aspect to the relationship that I really wasn't ready for. And so um, that's why a lot of people tend to stay in these long, drawn-out, toxic relationships because of those reasons. We've had sex, and now we don't want to let go, even though we know that the relationship is bad for us. And I, I'm one of those people. So... That's one of the reasons why I decided to give up sex because I want people to see me for who I really am and I want to see people for who they really and truly are. Then the second question was, and I want you all to answer the question too when dating someone, how far is too far? Then the second question was, how many of you have made up, how many of you have made up your mind not to have sex only to end up having sex? Now that I am saved, now that I want to do better, now that I have made a commitment before the actual commitment not to have sex, um, when I tell people that I am celibate until marriage, I think they continue talking to me in hopes of one day luring me to their house and trying to see how far they can actually get me into having sex with them. Because you would be amazed at what some men have told me. Like, some men have told me, girl, you just playing. You only saying that. Or, girl, uh, you, yeah, you, yeah, you say that, but we all know that you ain't really making no guys wait. Or, girl, you got two kids. Now, why all of a sudden you try to be celibate? First and foremost, don't hold my past against me. Second, what I'm saying is the truth. And this ain't no game. I will let a man know in a second. I am not a game. I am not to be played with. What I say is what I say, what I say. And what I said is true. And so um, when they finally figure out and know that I am serious, they no longer want to talk to me because they know that there's no way that they are going to get me to change my mind. So I want you all to answer that question as well. And that just really concludes um, my book review from The Broad Experiment. Um, like I said, it's definitely a good book. If you do want to read the series, I definitely read The Single Sister Experiment first because it introduces you to the characters and then The Bride Experiment is just a continuation from the uh, from the first book. And then um another question that was posed in that book was can men really be celibate and can a lady's man really turn into a guy's man and to answer both of those questions um yes yes men can be celibate and yes a, a lady's man can turn into a guy's man and i don't believe in double standards um i believe a promiscuous woman can be turned into a godly woman god calls different people to fulfill his purposes um while you know while we're here on earth so god can really use anybody and anybody um has the capability and the ability to change as long as it's something that they really want to do um i know in some of my other videos i would say that me changing in 2019 that really wasn't a goal for me like a goal for me in 2019 was bettering myself and as i bettered myself things began to change. So that's it. That's all I have. And, you know, as always, please do not forget to like, comment, subscri subscribe. I always have a hard time saying that word. And share my videos with um, other people. And let's get interactive. Until next time, bye, cozy lovers.